And we are live. Okay, now that we're recording. Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome. Thank you so very much for joining us this evening for what will, as Ratashem, be a very exciting, informative, and interesting evening with Rabbi Duchman from the UAE. Um, it's not very common that we've I think any rabbi has ever been able to make such an introduction um, from that part of the world. But I do first want to begin by thanking Ronnie Kowadlo for coordinating this evening together with Rabbi Duchman's office and Rabbi Duchman. So thank you, Ronnie. And I do want to welcome and thank my co-hosts as well, Rabbi Gutnik, Rabbi David Gutnik from East Melbourne Shul, welcome. And Rabbi Shlomo Nathanson from Chabad Port Melbourne and from Turak Shul. And to all those who are here from those respective shuls, welcome and thank you for joining us. And for all those who are here from Melbourne, from Eretz Yisrael, from Dubai, wherever you may be joining us from, a very, very warm shalom aleichem, salam aleikum, a very warm welcome uh, to you all. You have not come to hear me this evening. So without any further ado, I extend a very warm welcome to Rabbi Levi Duchman. Rabbi in the United Arab Emirates. Rabbi Duchman, Hello. welcome. Um, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you this evening. I think what will happen is to, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions throughout the evening, instead of unmuting yourselves, please feel free to pop them in the chat. And then perhaps if Rabbi Duchman hasn't answered your questions from his, um, from his presentation this evening, we can pose them uh, to him. We also have not only a talk, but we will we'll hopefully have some sort of tour as well of the shul. But Rabbi Duchman, I'm going to head, hand the microphone over to you and perhaps you can give us some sort of background from where you've come from to, 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 de, to today. I can't help but think, you know, we've just come from Parshat Lech Lecha of Avraham making that journey from a very familiar place to a very unfamiliar place. And you've done much the same on the same mission, no less. So Rabbi Duchman, all yours. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate this, uh, this opportunity. And thank you, Rani, um, for, for, for pushing and making this happen. It's a great um, honor and privilege to, to spend for you guys the evening, for me, my afternoon with, with, with your shul members, with the multiple shul members. So it's a great pleasure. I know today was a big day in Melbourne with the Melbourne Cup. So um, difficult, difficult to pronounce the winner. The, the 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 horse that won, but I guess congratulations for whoever you were, whoever you guys were following. So thank you. So so that's first of all. So yes. Um. Th so thank you for that. Um. Just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Rabbi Levi Duchman. I am originally from Brooklyn, New York, from a small place called Crown Heights. I'm not sure if any of you ever heard of Crown Heights, and I've been living here in the United Arab Emirates for the past six years. Um where I've been the only rabbi living here in the UAE, but I must tell you before me moving to the UAE permanently, there's been uh, members of our Jewish community that have been living in the UAE for close to about 40 years that I know. So there's been a Jewish presence in the UAE for quite some time. Um, I do recognize some people on the call, some of some people on the call that have been passing through through the United Arab Emirates as well. So a uh, so great welcome, very nice to, very nice to, to see you and so yeah so we've been here for the past so I've been here for the past six years and there's been a lot a lot of developments here in the United Arab Emirates um, for both the Jewish community I would say the wider for the wider the Jewish community locally and the Jewish community internationally especially since the Abrahamic Accord um, so just going to tell you a bit about what's what what Jewish what our how our Jewish community is today in the United Arab Emirates and then I will allow everyone to ask some questions and then after that I will give you guys a tour of our current Jewish community center in Dubai. So in the UAE today you will have um, when it comes you have we have a really nice community, a young community. Our community members come from really all around the world from Australia, New Zealand, um, Europe, Israel, the Maghreb, Morocco, Tunisia, Ashkenazi, Sephardim, America, you name it we probably have someone in our community from there. If they're not from there, one of their parents are for sure from there. So our community is really, I would say really diverse. I would say our community is really a diverse community. 
We currently have a Talmud Torah, which is an after school program for the children to come study. We have about 40 children in our after school program. And since the Abrahamic Accord, we opened up the first Jewish nursery in the region. So we have now currently a Jewish nursery where children come daily to, 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 to our nursery. So it's quite exciting. When it comes to food, obviously food is what attracts, what attracts everyone and makes a, a, strong, a good community has to have good food options. So we have a local kosher shechita. So all of our kosher chicken is slaughtered locally in, a, one of, in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi in Al Ain. Um, so we do a, a weekly shechita now and we have a kosher restaurant in the Burj Khalifa in the Armani Hotel, a really nice kosher restaurant called Armani Kaf. And we as well have a few kosher caterers um, which, which are here and, and, and offer kosher food as well. So we have quite, quite a variety of kosher food for such a new community. So that's, that's, that's very exciting about our community. And as well with our minyanim. So we have a, a new synagogue since the Abrahamic Accord that opened in Abu Dhabi. And in Dubai as well, we have multiple synagogues and now multiple minyanim. So just to give you an example, last week, um, just since the Abrahamic Accord, we've been getting a real influx of visitors. So we, not everyone fit into the Jewish community center. So we started doing minyanim in different hotels around the city where we offer like a Shabbaton where they could go spend the Shabbat in the hotel and then able to pray and, and have davenings over there. So we're, we're lucky to have multiple Sefer Torahs. So every week we have in different locations and the community is quite lovely. Um, in regards, and this is the big question I'm sure many of you, many of you um, would want to understand is the relationship between the Jewish community and the Emirati community and the local community. Um, so I must tell you that the local authorities have been exceptionally well to our community, not only since the Abrahamic Accord, but well before that for many years. Um, the UAE is a very tolerant, it's a very tolerant country. It's a place where they really promote coexistence and people and coexistence, tolerance, um, in, in an incredible way. And really our community was benefiting from this, as I said before, way before the Abrahamic Accord, we had everything we need. And this is really the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed um, to, for the UAE to be a beacon of light for their neighbors in the region and how to really promote this tolerance and coexistence. I don't know if any of you guys saw this, the project that they're working on in Abu Dhabi called the Abrahamic the Abrahamic house, where it will house a church, a synagogue, and a, and a mosque, not in the same building, but on the same campus, to really show the, to really show tolerance. And just a few weeks ago, since the Abrahamic Accord, the Abu Dhabi government has reached out to us to have all of their hotels in Abu Dhabi offer kosher food. So this is something which I don't think you have any other country in the world which the government would reach out to the hotel, asking the hotel to please, whether it's a kosher kitchen, whether it's a kosher menu, whether it's something to implement kosher options in the hotel is something special. So as I said in the beginning, we are very lucky. Our community is very lucky to be here. We're lucky to be living here in the, in the UAE and we have a great relationship with, with everyone. I think we should hear, I'm sure many of you guys have questions. So if anyone has questions, you, you could, Type it in the in the in the chat box. We will answer the question, and then I will transfer the video to to my phone, and I can give you guys a small tour around our synagogue. Thanks, Levy. This is Rabbi David Gutnick in East Melbourne, and first of all, big shkoyach for coming on. And actually, we've got um, some congregants. One in particular who who uh, speaks so highly of you. Spent some time in that part of the world and came to your services and was made to feel so welcome by you. So we know that this is uh, something that has been corroborated <laughs> by others, uh, this story. It's not just a, you know, it's it's a fantastic story what you've done. I've got a quick, I'm gonna jump straight into the pointy end of uh, being a Chabad outreach worker, being a shliach. Um, we know that the, um, the, the model of funding is often via philanthropic and you rely on donations uh, is, is, is this, do, are you supported by the government or, or how, how do you support yourself 
living in that part of the world and what are the living conditions like? Okay, so this is a, this is a, this is a good question. So, <laughs> so, so no, cur currently um, the, the community is self-sufficient and, and the community um, provides for, we provide for each other, we're a growing community. So anytime we would have a new project, uh, where members would come together and say, okay, we need to rent, rent a shul. So we would all put money out to, to rent the shul or for different activities or for different chagim. So I would say we, 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 we support each other. I wouldn't say there's specific financial support from the government. The living conditions in the UAE is fantastic. It's a nice place. It's modern. It's clean. It's safe. So we really have, have, everything, that, uh, have everything that we need. We, in the beginning, yes, we had challenges when we used to have to bring our own chicken and meat in our suitcases and, and make sure to, when we check in, coming through, just have suitcases full of food. And now we have the luxury of just having local fresh chicken or having a local import or importing kosher meat. So this is something which I would say a few years ago, I would never imagine. So this is quite exciting. And the newest development is something which I, would, was never even a dream for there to be a daily minion in Dubai. So right now, every morning at 8 a.m., we have a daily minion. In the beginning, I would say maybe six, seven weeks ago, we were struggling. Um, and now we're, because of COVID, we're struggling to keep the numbers under 20, 25. So we're, we're actually almost double minion every morning. And this is something um, which used to be a challenge for a regular Shabbat. And this is, of course, um, with the Abrahamic Accord, the opening, it's not only opening, that doesn't only mean that you, for Israel, but also for Jewish tourists around the world, find that, that now it's a great opportunity for them to come visit the UAE. There's a lot of interest in the UAE and Abu Dhabi and Dubai. So this is something also, um, I would say a big change. Amazing. There's some questions in the chat. Do you, do you want yes. me to read them or you'll- uh... I think you could read them and we'll answer them. Okay, so a little um, more exciting. <laughs> yeah, make it a little bit more dramatic. Uh, the the first, the earliest question is asking for recommendations. People are are dreaming of travel uh, when when our borders reopen and, and international travel is allowed again. Um, so, uh, have you got recommendations of somewhere to stay near the shul? You have yeah, a partnership so our, with the hotel. Our shul is in Al Wasl. Um, we're right near a few big hotels and near a Marriott. Mar Near, near a few other hotels, but like I mentioned in the beginning of the call, um, almost every Shabbat you will have a hotel with a kosher um, option in the hotel. So having davening and a regular service with meals in an actual hotel. Currently, we have them in downtown Dubai in a hotel called the Palace Downtown, which is connected to Dubai Mall. But of course, if anyone needs any reference or any suggestions, um, with pleasure, you can get in touch with us, and we will um, we will suggest the best, the best, and most befitting place for your needs for to stay. Thank you. Uh, follow up question: How many people and or families are actually in your community? So, so I would say I say there's about a few thousand Jews living in the UAE, um, a few hundred families between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And we have our community is quite international because there's members, which some members that were living here and they left. But for me, they're really part of the community because they're the pioneers of the community. I would say there's a nice group of people, which for me, they, I would call them the pioneering Jewish community of the Gulf. Um, the people that really worked hard and I would say gave up a lot. I went on a lot of misirat nefesh, giving up. Um, to, to support the community, whether it was by their attendance or brother, whatever it was to, to show their involvement. So our community today is, is large because anyone that was part of our community, even though they moved on with their families to other places, for us, they're really part of our family and part of our community. So the number is, 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 is really growing, growing. I think we will very soon be one of the biggest Jewish communities around the world. Um, and we have a huge influx of people moving to the UAE as well. Incredible. Um, Susie wants to know, how does the average person in the street react to you or Jewish people in general? Um, okay, great question. Um, if anyone's in Dubai, there's not too many people hanging out in the streets. They're all in their cars. Um, no, there's, there's, there's um, but people, people really, really happy. Um, to have Jews here and to, and when someone identifies a Jew, they'll always, 
exchange nice things. We've never experienced any anti-Semitism or, or, or any hostility at all. Um, always very, very good conversations, good work ethics. And I would say we really get along very, very well together. I could say my neighbors are all Emiratis and we, 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 we get along with each other. We have great, um, we complement each other, learn from each other, do good things together. So I, I wouldn't say there's any um, rift or issues between, between the Jewish community and the local community. What a beautiful thing to hear, Baruch Hashem. Is there a language barrier? How do you, how do you communicate? So, do, so UAE is, most of the people living in the UAE speak English quite well. Um, I personally am um, fluent in Arabic, in the local Arabic, which is of course helpful, but you could really get, a, get around with English. You didn't learn that in Altera, did you? You speak Urdu or, or, or Hindi is also very, very helpful. Wow. Great. Uh, Shlomo Nathanson, would you like to ask any questions of Shlomo? No, okay. And uh, what's the situation with COVID? You did you did mention, but how how is COVID there? So our so so COVID, we obviously in the beginning COVID we had um, quite strict lockdowns, and thanks to the leadership here in the UAE, um, they really managed to implement proper social distancing in the restaurants, in the malls, um, and everywhere. So in the hotels, so the numbers are are quiet down. We did not experience any any second, I would say second wave or second lockdown. And I don't think we will, um, as long as everyone continues and maintains the, the social distance and, and, and keeping careful. And this is something which I must say is, is unique and special in the UAE. So we're basically open back to normal. Obviously everyone has to wear masks. Um, and aside for that, it's, it's not, I would, I would say, yeah. And one from one from me, um, the that your wife, the family. How, how does that work? The children, I'm assuming you have. So, so good question. So, no, I don't. Not not yet. We'll okay. see. We'll see. We'll 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 see. It. We'll we'll see how it will work. But we do have many many families here with their children, and like I said, like a regular regular community. I really invite and encourage everyone to come see the, uh, the Jewish community in the UAE. Amazing. So, so there is a there is a Jewish. You said a nursery, um, a nursery, a Talmud Torah, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs. Um, we are starting to have a few weddings as well in our community, so it's quite exciting. So it's very soon as is as we just hope we won't get to the Jewish cemetery, and then we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Hashem. Wow. Just a, yeah. a curious question: Is there any particular um, way that you have to act? You know, any 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 etiquette different living in living in the Gulf, living in in the UAE, just the way you have to act around Emiratis. I don't I I don't say there's the way you have to act, but of course there's you're you're here and you would want to adapt to the culture, and adapt to the local society, and just be respectful, understand the 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 I would say the local culture. I don't think you have to do anything it's not the, that's not the, the message or the feeling that you have like i mentioned in the beginning uae is a really tolerant place mm. and and so but of course there's there's certain things it's like certain cultural things here in the uae or in the gulf which on the contrary it's in, i personally encourage everyone to interact with the culture learn something new um, and really tap into the local culture that's beautiful. You know, you, you began, I think we, we both began touching on Abraham, Abraham Accords and so on. What is the, the feeling about the normalization of, um, you know, relationship between the UAE and Israel, at least on the ground, the people that you meet? Do you get asked about it a lot? So, of course, it's probably um, something 80 to 90 percent of my time. I'm dealing with um, new, new, new things happening with the Abrahamic Accord. And of course, people are really excited about it. People are are really energized, excited. Um, like the Rebbe always taught us, and this is something that I share with all of the Emiratis and the Israelis that come here, that when two people come together, it's how to benefit a third person. And you really see that when the UAE and Israel are through this Abrahamic Accord, there's such nice initiatives which they're working on, whether it's in, in healthcare or, or, or other, other things to really help a third and 
and to really, for me, I say it's a, a new era in the Middle East and the, for the whole region. So it's something very, very exciting. It's incredible. And you, you had the privilege and the honor, the kavod, to uh, take a call from the Prime Minister of Israel. And what was that like? What was that, what was that conversation like? Yes. Not so giving the, anyway top level secrets. So, so no, the conversation was very similar to, 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 to what we, we are discussing here, that you could have the diplomatic ties, which are important, but at the end of the day, the, I would say the soldiers on the field, the people on the field is what's key. So if you could have the actual communities, the Marathi community, the Jewish community, the Israeli community, the youth, um, the young businessmen to get together, to learn from each other and to really interact with each other, this is something really important. And, and I would say this is one of the real responsibilities and value um, values of our community here in the UAE and I would say when Jews work here, they, they, they really keep this, that it's about being a, a light on the other nations and, and to, really, to really bring that and implement that for, for the other nations to learn about us. Many of the people that are meeting Jews here in the UAE, it's their first time meeting a Jew. So, so this impression is, is, is essential um, and, and really important. So, and this is something I would say, which is one of our real strong values of any decisions our our community our synagogue makes is how is this going to be our logayim how is this gonna 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 penetrate for the wider jewish community it's incredible david go ahead yeah there's a couple of questions in the chat and then i've got a, a, just a, a, a curveball um what <laughs> What, what jobs do most Jews have there? Uh, is it a transient community or are, are there employment opportunity, long-term employment opportunities? First of all, who said all Jews have jobs here? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, there's really all, all kinds of jobs. There's, I wouldn't say there's one. We have lawyers, we have doctors, we have businessmen, we have diamond traders, we have, we have literally everyone, engineers, I would say pilots, um, people in aviation, everything there's I wouldn't say there's one specific job is there a um, job opportunity of course there's there's always opportunity for for anything UAE is a young it's still a relatively young country and a growing country so any young and growing place there's usually opportunity and and does the um the Palestinian Israeli conflict come into the discourse at all so I, I don't get, like, we don't, us as a community, we don't get involved in any of the politics. Um, so it's completely, it's, it's completely not in our, our scope of work in any way. So we don't, and it doesn't here. And that wasn't the curveball question, by the way. And then <laughs> oh, that's coming in a minute. Um, <laughs> uh, what type of traits would you recommend for a future rabbi for the UAE? What are the characteristics a rabbi in, in that part of the world requires? I think somebody's um, eyeing your position. <laughs> Great question. The the I would say someone someone open minded young that could really um see the see uh, we're in a, where where I mentioned before and this is important for people to understand. I would say for also communities around the world to understand that that we're really in the beginning of a new era, the beginning of a time where where we have the opportunity to 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 show, I would say, the Arab world, what the Jewish community is. How does the modern Jewish community look? How does the Jewish community add to the local, to the, to the local society and to the local businesses? This is something which, which a lot of the Muslims heard from their grandparents or their great-grandparents when, the, when there were big communities in Morocco, Tunisia, Libya, Iraq, Iran, and something more in the history and to have this opportunity to reiterate that and to show them again and to bring this openness and to build this connection, I think is something which is, which, which is, a, which is really key um, for the next, if you're looking on a vision for the next 15, 20 years on, on how the region um, will look, please God. And, and do you, somebody's messaged me privately, do you, do you travel around uh, other, other states um, to, to spread Yiddishkeit, to Bahrain? Um, any, any other locations? Uh, yes, there? so so I have the, the honor to cover all the whole GCC. So I travel quite often to Bahrain, um, Oman, Kuwait. Um, I've recently, because of the COVID, hasn't been so easy. And now we have others, tra others, others traveling. 
as well around the region. So, so yes, we make sure to, 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 to have everyone, but um, I do think as well there, the communities will grow and will flourish and, and will, will really become um, stronger communities in other countries as well. And do you foresee that you'll have other Chabad Shluchim working with you in those, in those countries? hundred percent. I see there's going to be many, many um, Shluchim, rabbis, different Jewish organizations. Probably every week we have different Jewish organizations visiting, whether it's the federations, the joint, the Jewish agency. Um, people are really trying to, to help and get involved and to make a, to make a difference and to, to add Okay. And before I handball back to Shmuel, my curveball question, somebody messaged me privately. I don't know what the, the background to this question is. Uh, how old are you? How old am I? Are you willing to say? <laughs> I am, that's such a curveball. Okay. I was expecting worse. <laughs> I think I the ramifications 20, of the question am, are, are the curveball. I am 27 years old. Amazing. Yeah. So at such a young age, you've, you've established... Uh, an outreach like that and, and, a, and a role a role in the community like that it's 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 quite incredible well done back to small absolutely a trailblazer just like abraham of old <laughs> amazing um was this year the first year you had a sukkah down at the bottom of the burj khalifa yeah yes right on the burj by the burj khalifa this was the first year but we had many sukkahs over the past many years wow Quite beautiful to yes, see those. There's been people suk building sukkahs in, 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 in the Middle East for quite some time already. And quite exciting ones. Wow. Yes. And are, are you a, a one-person job? Meaning no. Rabbi Chazan Balkora outreach? So I used, I, I used to be. I used to be just myself having to do everything. Um, but today we, we have eight intern rabbis that are here helping. Wow. That, that, that came in the past few months and we have some others on the way and I would say our team has grown tremendously since then. Beautiful. That's great. Um, I think, yeah, some of the questions being asked have already been answered. Rabbi Duchman does speak Arabic to the person who just asked. Um, and, and do, and do um, Jewish women, are they required to, to is, is, first of all, is there a particular dress, dress code for women and, and, would Jewish women be obliged to keep that dress code as well? No, no, and no. There's no Jew, there's no dress code, and <laughs> and and Jewish women are not obliged to to do the to the do the dress code. I'm just gonna get a get the 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 camera from from to get the the turn off the camera, and I'm gonna connect it to my phone in the synagogue. Okay, so just give me Thank you. give give me one moment, and Beautiful. I think we're gonna do it from. From, from from another phone. So one second. I, I've made the Jewish UAE a co-host. I think Ms. Ba asked me to do so. Okay, perfect, perfect. So just hold on and we're gonna... For those who joined a little bit later and are wondering what's going on, Rabbi Levy will now take us um, for a little bit of a tour around his shul in the UAE. So just hang tight. Take in all that amazing information. Who would have ever thought that we would be having a discussion such as this? It's, it's quite, quite incredible, quite incredible. And, uh, and and the you know his, his, one of the things that strikes us Shmuel, Reb Shmuel, is his age as well. Like just a young man going out, and pioneering like that into the great unknown. You know, we we think going off into Elwood and East Melbourne <laughs> is daunting. Elwood, <laughs> crossing the Yarra, crossing the Yarra River, you know, <laughs> panic panic in the eyes of your average Caulfield resident to have to cross the Yarra River. And uh, <laughs> this is unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it is. It's and almost he's been there for six years. Yeah. yeah. And, and on a day that we hear, I think somebody commented about this, but on a day that we hear such horrific news coming out of Europe and the relationships that are going on there, to hear such hopeful and bright and to, to envision such a beautiful future in the Middle East is, is just so beautiful to see. Okay, yeah. so, okay, guys, so... so One second, lady, I, I'm going to switch, going to take your old computer off spotlight. One second. Um, Add spotlight, replace spotlight. Let's see if that works. Yes, that's you. All right. The Havod. Okay, are we good? So this is this is this is this is the synagogue. We could, could turn around. We have we have here in, in Dubai. We'll show you outside as well. But I want to show you guys something really important of uh, something of importance that we have 
is every Shabbat we make a special prayer for the welfare of the government and UAE military forces. And we say this prayer in three different languages. So we start off in Arabic and we have the prayer in Arabic, which we say, and then we move on to English and then to Hebrew. So this is a prayer which we make every Shabbat after taking up power. Thank you for the government. Just One just second, Rabbi Levy. Yes. Before you close that book, do us a favor, do us the honors and read out that prayer in Arabic, please. <laughs> we can, we'll read just, 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 the, just the, the, the first part. And we'll read the later, the, the more we'll, we'll read, we'll, we'll read later. You have to come to Shon Shabbat for that. And then here is our, 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 our Kodesh. So with our, with our Torahs, like I said before, we really have a mix of Sephardi and, and, and the Ashkenazi Torah. So we, we have, a, we have a nice, we have a nice mix of different, of the different parts. We have over here in our synagogue as well, we have quite a, a new library. Um, we have the, the Talmud and some, some of the other, some, some of the other books. We'll Has show the you art school come out with an Arabic Talmud? <laughs> you guys, <laughs> and over here we have we have here the we have here the picture in our in our main lobby of the shul of all of the sheikhs here in here in here in here in the UAE. I'll just give you a tour of explain who's who. So so right over here you have in the center you have someone named Sheikh Zayed. He is the founder of the UAE. And on the left, you have his oldest son, Sheikh Khalifa, who was the ruler of the UAE. And on the left of them, you have Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, who is the crown prince. And on the right, you have Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, the ruler of Dubai. And then you have his son, the crown prince. And just across it, you have a picture of the Rebbe. And which is really nice to see is we have the same artist which which have painted the picture of the Rebbe has painted the Sheikh. So this is something something nice. We're just gonna show you the outside of of our of our shul. This is our corona our sanitization box where anyone that comes has to first get first first goes to sanitizing. Can you just turn around um, and show us that again? We don't have that here. In shul, anyway. So this is, when you walk into shul, you 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 would walk here. You would get your temperature. It will tell you if you're good to go or not. And then over here, the sensor will will give you uh will give you right there. Wow. Sanitization. Over here we have this is outside of our shul. If you see that building, that's the Burj Khalifa. Um, the world's tallest building. What's our restaurant? Um, over here we have our just a some security cabin, and this is the outside of our of our shul. Today in the UAE is November third is the flag day, so you can see our nursery. We'll get a little closer. Our nursery has um, the children decorated UAE flags. So that's this is our. This is our nursery, which is right on the side of our shul. Oh. And this is our classroom. Hmm. Where we have one of our classrooms where the kids can learn the olive bet. How many children? So in, in, our, in our nursery, now we have five children and in the Talmud Torah, we have 40. The, the nursery is just a few weeks old. Mazel tov. This is... And this is our... This is our date trees and there's really good dates in the UAE. So you have some really good, really, really nice day. This is our thing. I'm just gonna, this is, I'm just gonna join you guys back from our computer in just one moment. Sure.
And while we're waiting for Rabbi Levi, Miriam, I, I see that you asked, where do the women sit? It's a, a traditional Orthodox shul, and I did notice a machitza there. So as you would have in every Orthodox shul, the men and women sit apart during davening, but a beautiful shul. Wow, how incredible is this, ladies and gents? Quite amazing. What do you reckon, David? I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried that if my, my, my president is on, he's going to make me do that uh, decontamination station. I was thinking the same thing. Mark? <laughs> Yes. Hello. Detox. So, 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 so that that's a that's just a a very very small tour of our of a small tour of our community, of our community center. Um, unfortunately, it's 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 one forty in the afternoon, so not too many people hanging out here. But I do definitely think we should do uh, more events with the community, uh, maybe with your community and our community. And I think you guys, um, thank you again for really reaching out and for, and for doing this together. And so Chazaku Baruch, Chazaku um, and Ronnie for reaching out to your consulate or the embassy and, um, the, and, and it's good that you guys are in touch with them as well. So it, it, it helps our community, of course, when everyone's in touch with the different embassies and consulate around the world. So it was very nice to get the regards from them, from your community. So. So I see you guys are doing a really, really good job on that. Thank you, Rabbi Lady. Before Rabbi David gives the closing remarks, I just, Ronnie actually posed a very interesting question. Do you actually have to have the picture of the various sheikhs in the shul? No, so you don't, but most public areas here, out of respect, do have the sheikhs in the, in the shul. If you walk into a shul in Morocco, obviously not in the actual sanctuary, but in the lobby, you will always have a, you will always have a picture of, of the king um, in Morocco, or if you go to any of the places here, any of the main buildings, you'll always have that. So, of course, it's a, it's not, it's not that we have to, it's a great honor for us to have it. Great. Um, absolutely. And I agree with all those who are writing beautiful comments now about yourself, about your shul, and uh, a thanks to you and all the blessings that you wished us of Chazak Ubaruch right back at you. Rabbi David, bring us home. Yes, there are a couple, a couple of last questions there. I just, just I'll add to one of them. Do, are you working with other Jewish org, com, organizations there, or is it completely Chabad solo? No. So, um, so absolutely not. We we work here. It's called the JCC, the Jewish Community Center, and of course we're working with many Jewish organizations. Even in Dubai, we have multiple. In the UAE, we have multiple Jewish organizations on the ground. So we're working together with everyone and to and and, and to making things happen. So of course and, and, and it, and some women's groups like WITSO, um, the, the women's Zionist organizations, any of those groups there? Hadassah? So there is, there is, there are, there are a few women groups, um, Jewish women groups together. There's a few Jewish business network work groups together. So there's really um, a growth. And then if there's anyone from your community that have any of the groups that are interested in doing something together with our, the different groups in our community, um, they are, they are more than invited and encouraged to, to reach out and to do so. Thank you so much, Rabbi Levy. And uh, just as a closing remark, it's been a, 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 you know, a tumultuous time for the world, everything that we've gone through uh, here in Australia or wh whichever part of the world, your part of the world, the United States, United Kingdom. And the one silver lining or one of the silver linings that we've really found in all this is the fact that we've been able to bring different communities together. I mean, even tonight, it's a number of shuls uh, collaborating together. I can see some of my members, Elwood Shul's members, Turak and Port Melbourne as well. And, and it's a, um, it's been wonderful really and very heartwarming, the fact that we can uh, unite here amongst different communities in Melbourne, but also that we can unite with you and we can get a sense of what you're doing. We can feel a camaraderie. We can, we can become um, small stakeholders in, in your journey and in your mission. I kind of, my first question was to open up if you were going to do a bit of a fundraising uh, gig at the beginning, um, but, you know, certainly to be able to give you the moral support at least and to be able to say that we're very proud of what you're doing and we give you full support. And if there's anything that we can do to further your, your mission over there, then, then don't hesitate to ask. We are a, um, a lovely Jewish community here in Melbourne that's always looking to reach out and to help. But I think the great silver lining in all this is that we can sit on a night like tonight, right after, as you rightly mentioned, we've, we've had a bit of a horse race for the first time in its history with no, with no crowd there. Everybody was complaining bitterly about that. And, um, but yet here's, here's the crowd, we're all together. We're all um, supporting you and, and feeling a sense of, of 
of Arvis Rayem, of friendship and camaraderie. So I think there's a real silver lining here. And really, thank you so much for, as somebody commented in the chat, opening up our eyes to a world that we otherwise um, would have had no idea, no idea that it was going on. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you to Ronnie and to Elwood Shul and to Rabbi Shloma at Turak and Chabad of Port Melbourne. Well, thank you. We, I second that. It's a great opportunity to, 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 like we started as well, to say that we really get to spend time with other communities around the world, other communities, um, and to, to learn from each other and to, to, to share values with each other is something so special and nice. So thank you very much. And we look forward, we look forward to hosting you guys here in, in the UAE, inshallah soon. <laughs> All, all the best. Very, very nice. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. Thank you, Rabbi Levy. Thank you, Mispa. Thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. Truly, we can say, I'm Yisrael Chai from all over the world. Yes. Bid Dubai. We'll see you. Yeah. <laughs>